Hey guys, happy Tuesday. I hope you're all okay and enjoying the sun. Yesterday's weather was awesome, wasn't it? It was like 24 degrees. Um, it is lovely out there. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed some of the sun. Make sure to keep safe, washing your hands, putting on um, sun cream on. I was called the suntan lotion. Not sure why. Sun cream on um, and keep hydrated. Don't forget to do your learning. I've seen some awesome learning so far. And I hope that continues. So, today is lesson seven. Let us get started. Right, bubble myself. There we go. So, today is Tuesday, the 23rd of June, 2020. And today's lesson is lesson seven for myths and legends. You know the drill now. You know the system. Maybe I'll have to stop putting this in because you guys know this thing. You're going to need pencil or pen. You're going to need paper. You're going to need Lesson 7 from the Grange website on Myths and Legends. Pause the video. Make sure you've got everything ready for me. Hopefully, you've now worked out what you need. So you will have it already before either you start the video. So today's ally is that you'll be able to understand that the ancient Greeks had believed in a different creation story to maybe what we believe in now. You'll know what a creation story is, you'll be able to think about other people's feelings and you'll be able to explain what the myth explains that we're going to read today. You know the drill, pause the video while you write down the ally for me. Don't forget the date as well, Tuesday the 23rd of June, I thought it was April then. I have gone back in time by two months. Okay, so we're going to do our recap first because it's really important to refresh our knowledge. There's four words here, reproached, banished, quash and rebellion. These are all from Thursday's lesson. I would like you to write the definition for those four words. Try not to use your glossary, but write the definition for those four words. If you're struggling to write the definition, can you remember what word type they were? Were they nouns? Were they verbs? Were they adjectives? Were they adverbs? Um, try your best. I know it's hard. I know we've been learning lots of new vocabulary. But pause the video while you write down your um, definitions for these four words. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next slide. So if you're not ready, make sure you've paused the video. Okay, so reproached is to express to someone your disapproval or disappointment in their actions and that's a verb well done if you got that that's quite a tricky word banished i hope most of you got banished and that means sending someone away from a country or a place as an official punishment so you are banished to mrs watson's office if you you misbehave hopefully none of you have done that there that is a verb it's a doing word or an action Quash. Quash is like a really old fashioned word and we don't hear it very often these days, but it means to put an end to rumours. So if there's rumour going around school, um, the teachers talk to you to quash all the rumours and say, this is not happening. For example, if there's a rumour going around school that I'm leaving, I would quash all those rumours because I am not leaving. I'm not leaving the school. No, no, no. And that's a verb. Rebellion, and that's an act of armed resistance to established government or leader, so fighting back against. That's a noun. I hope you did really well. I would have expected you guys to get at least two out of four there. If you didn't, make sure you are practising um, learning those definitions with your glossary. If you didn't add these to your glossary, add them now. It's really important we learn these words because they'll be used all throughout our English topic this time. Okay, and they'll really help you when you move to year six. Pause the video if you need to. So, there's four sentences here, and you're going to put a tick or a cross to show whether you think each sentence is used, uses eternity correctly or incorrectly. So, Zeus condemned Atlas to bear the weight of the sky on his shoulders for all eternity. That's number one. Is it a correct or incorrect use of eternity? England waited an eternity to be in the World Cup semi-final. Is that right or wrong use of eternity? Villains in many stories look for eternal life. Yes or no? The Philosopher's Stone was believed to give to its creator eternity life. 
yes or no if you haven't filled in those four then just give yourself a minute you might want to pause the video because i'm going to carry on the lesson so let's go through the answers zeus condemned atlas to bear the weight of the sky on his shoulders for all eternity now what does eternity mean it means forever doesn't it um an unending time so yeah zeus was had um zeus said to atlas to bear the weight of the sky on his shoulder for eternity we read about that um yesterday trying to get my days muddled up there no we read about it yesterday so if you put a tick next to that one you are correct well done England waited an eternity to be in a World Cup semi-final. Now, I don't watch football here. It might seem like you waited ages and forever for the World uh, for England to be in the World Cup semi-final, but it really wasn't. It wasn't an unending period of time. It wasn't millions and trillions of years. So I'd say it probably wasn't the best use of eternity. And villains in many stories look for eternal life yeah i would agree that would be a great use of eternal and the philosopher's stone was believed to give its creator eternal eternity life now that just doesn't make grammatical sense does it so blue zone especially i want to have a look at number four and i want you to rewrite the sentence so that it is correct for me so pause the video while you're doing that for me okay so you should have if you haven't finished that just pause the video a little bit longer if you're not in blue zone but you still want to have a go please do by all means it doesn't mean that you can't have a go if you're not in blue zone but it might be a little bit tricky okay let's carry on our lesson so we're going to recap the war of the titans i might need to move my bubble a little bit now there's a lot of writing here first of all so what i would say unless you really 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 want to do not copy it out okay it'll take you forever um you might want to copy some of the sentences out you may wish to make notes but you will need to fill in the gaps you will need to write down what order the words go in down at the bottom here you will see that there's different words it is two pages long okay some of the words will be repeated so i'm going to read it through i will give you time ish if i remember if not pause the video after this slide before we go into the next slide um sometimes i forget these things so in the beginning there was uranus and gaia they had three sets of children first were the Giant human-like gods, led by Cronus. The second were enormous one-eyed creatures called... Uranus feared that they would overthrow him as the king, so he imprisoned them in the centre of the earth. Gaia and Cronus felt Uranus was too unjust and joined forces to overthrow him. But Cronus's own reign did not get off to the best start. After being overthrown by his son Uranus that Cronus would be overthrown by his own son too. Remember to look down here to help you. So Cronus decided to his children before they could overthrow him. He did not want to meet the same fate as his father before him. After a while, Cronus's wife Rhea, whose children had all been eaten by her husband, decided enough was enough. When her last child, Zeus, was born, she hid him and tricked Cronus into eating a... Zeus grew up safe and sound, far away from Cronus, and when he, fully, he was fully grown, returned home to overthrow his father and fulfil Uranus' prophecy. He began by freeing his siblings from... stomach. Grateful for being saved, his giant siblings joined him in the war against Cronus. The Cyclops made weapons for Zeus and his brothers, and... Four, they made a trident. Four, they made a helmet of invisibility. To Zeus they gave the fearsome. And so the war began. Pause the video while you finish off uh, filling in the gaps. I know I probably could talk quite fast. Um, I'm going to move on to the second page, so do make sure it's paused. But Zeus and Cronus' armies were too evenly matched. The struggle was so fierce and the fighting was so furious that it raged on and on and on. Zeus's 
Zeus's Zeus's mighty thunderbolts on the sky struck Titan after Titan, but still the Titans fought on. Atlas's massive arms crushed god after god after god, but still the gods fought on. The almighty battles between the gods and the Titans raged on and on until the war had lasted for. Then finally, Zeus had seen enough. He unleashed his full power. Blinding light and deafening thunder filled the sky. The heat from the thunderbolts threatened to set the whole world ablaze. Zeus's siblings hurled boulders a hundred at a time at the titans. This assault was too much for the titans to bear. Although the titans were both massive and massively strong, the gods were immortal, all powerful, and in the end, proved undefeatable. Victorious, Zeus cast the titans out of heaven and banished them to the... The lowest region of the... Zeus and his siblings took their place on Mount Olympus. Zeus and his brothers then cast lots to see which should rule the air, which the sea and which the under the earth. And so became the king of heaven and ruled the waves and ruled the realm of the dead. Pause the video while you finish that off. The next screen is going to have the answers on for the first page. I'm not going to read them out. You should see where they are. They are in red. So pause the video if you need a little bit more time. Okay, so this is the first part. You can see the first answer was heaven. Then we had earth, titans, cyclops, prophesized, eat, stone dressed in baby clothing instead. Zeus grew up safe and sound. I think I might have... Mm, I think I might have highlighted a bit too much there, sorry. Um, Kronos's Poseidon Hades, Poseidon Hades Thunderbolt. Pause the video on this slide while you tick your answers, okay? Really important. I'm going to go on to the second slide now, so do make sure you pause it just in case you need a little bit more time. And those are the answers for the second slide. Ten years, Tartarus, Underworld. Zeus, Poseidon and Hades. Pause the videos while you mark the rest of your answers. Okay. I want you to match the gods, Athena, Zeus and Aphrodite, to one of the three descriptions. And then fill in the gaps. Now, just so you know, I've only just noticed, I can only apologise. There is one gap at the bottom of this, the first box. And it's really hard to see that there's a gap there. So... Goddess of love, she advised mortals and their problems in this area and helping those she favoured find love. However, she was argumentative and experienced a mm with Hera and Athena. This feud led to the famous mm, mm. The king of the gods, he explained the existence of mm, mm and mm. His two brothers were mm and mm. The goddess of wisdom turned Mm into a gorgon. Her feud with Aphrodite and Mm resulted in the Mm war. Pause the video while you match them up and then you fill in the gaps. I have a feeling on the next slide where I have the answers, I didn't fill in this gap. We'll work it out. Pause the video, I'm going on to the answers now. Yep, see, I thought I had. So, Aphrodite should be matched with the first one, goddess of love. So, here should be feud and this feud led to the famous Trojan War. I do apologise for missing that. Trojan War should be the second gap. Zeus was the king of the gods. And you should have filled in thunder, lightning and storms, and his brothers were Poseidon and Hades. We know this now. They should be right in the front of our memory. should be able to answer this very, very quickly. And finally, Athena. Um, she turned Medusa into a gorgon. Her feud with the... Um, with Aphrodite and Hera resulted in the Trojan War. Pause the video while you finish off marking your answers, okay? Well done if you got all of those right. It's really impressive knowledge. Okay, four new bits of vocabulary today. Get your glossary ready. You've got realm, and realm is a kingdom. Um, some of you might have a realm in Minecraft. That's a noun. Immensely. That's a way of describing something as an adverb, and it's to a great extent or extremely, so immensely proud. I am extremely proud of everyone who's um, submitting English work. Celestial throne. 
the chair of state of, or of a sovereign or high dignitary. So a big throne is like really important. And that's a noun, it's a thing. Flourish, and that's to grow or develop in a healthy or vigorous way, and it's a verb. So for example, some of you guys are flourishing at home with doing your home learning. Pause the video while you add these words to your glossary, please. Do you know about any other creation stories? Tell your tell somebody at home. Don't just write down. Just tell somebody. Maybe tell yourself. Cuddly toy. Um, your pet. Your PlayStation. Your Xbox. Tell something. Your pillow. Uh, tell something. Okay. So time to go on to our reading booklet. Um, oh, Miss Hewer has managed to lose everything. Okay, perfect. So let's minimise that. Oh, my face is there. How lovely. Online learning. You guys are year five. We are... Hmm, don't know why these are gone on the topic. I can only apologise for that, guys. But you guys know it's for our lesson. So, uh, we are on lesson seven, aren't we? So, let's download that. Sorry, this is my master version. So, you can see today's date and LI. Let's open it up nice and big so we can read it properly. There's a couple of tasks today. Two tasks, and then we've got a task in the reading, um, in my PowerPoint, so I'll make sure I go back to that as well. There were two titans, Prometheus and Epitheme. Epimetheus, 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 who had not fought against the gods in the War of the Titans. Zeus, king of the gods, gave them the task of making living creatures, and he sent them down to live on Earth. Epimetheus made turtles and gave them shells. He made horses and gave them tails and manes. He made anteaters and gave them long noses and longer tongues. He made birds and gave them the gift of flight. Then Zeus called to the good Prometheus, because although Epimetheus was a wonderful craftsman, he was not nearly as clever as his brother. Go, he said, and make man out of clay. Make him in shape and form like the immortal gods remember immortal means that you live forever right um and i will breathe life into him then you shall teach him what he needs to know so that he may honor the immortals and build temples for us so he, the people that um prometheus would build men man and um, they would build the temples for the gods and they would always honour the gods, the immortals, the ones that live forever. And after a little time he shall die and go down to the realm of my brother Hades and be subject to him. Where was the realm of brother Hades? Was the underworld? Well done if you got that right. Prometheus did as he was told. He took soil and mixed it into mud and out of that he moulded the first man. So, we've got Prometheus and Epimetheus. They were brothers. Do you remember? They are brothers. And Epimetheus is the one that first began making living creatures. And that was under instruction from Zeus. Now, Epithemus um, made lots of animals, so anteaters, turtles, um, birds. But Prom um, Prometheus was the one that was clever. Um, so he wasn't as good as a craftsman, uh, uh, that is Epimetheus, but he was clever. So that's why Zeus went to him. Right, all you have to do is true or false. Zeus believed that Prometheus was intelli more intelligent than his brother Epimetheus. True or false? I'm going to give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. That is is true well done if you got that right prometheus made the first man out of mud five four three two one zero i would somewhat disagree 
He did make it out of mud. However, it was mud mixed with soil. Okay, Zeus didn't want the first man to look like the gods. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. That's false. Zeus did want them to look like the gods. It tells us to make him in the shape and form like the immortal gods. So the shape and form the way we look. Well done if you got three out of three there. Prometheus loved mankind in the same way people love their pets. He was immensely proud of everything they did and boasted about them to almost anyone who would listen and genuinely fussed over them in every way possible. Instead of feeding them with food, however, he fed them with knowledge. Scraps of information that he had picked up from Athena, the god of... Do you remember? We just covered it. Who was Athena the god of? The goddess of wisdom. So well done if you got that right. The goddess of wisdom and his only real friend in Mount. Any ideas? Olympus. She would tell him about mathematics and immediately he would rush down to earth to pass it on. The next day it might be art or architecture. The day after that science or engineering. Do you see all these subjects are still subjects we study today? As the years passed and mankind became more intelligent, Zeus, who had been watching all this from his celestial throne, grew uneasy. I'm a little worried about these human beings, he remarked to his wife, Hera. I just wonder if they're not getting a bit above themselves. Where will it lead to? Well, what are you going to do about it? asked Hera. I don't know, but I'm keeping my eye on them. Zeus might have been a jealous god, but he was not cruel enough to destroy the newly formed human race. And so mankind continued to flourish. That's a really cool creation story. So you've got two tasks here. So task one is how do you think Zeus feels about the humans living on Earth? And make a prediction about what happens next. And then we've got... Another task, myths are often explained as a natural phenomenon. phenomena. What does this myth explain? So what does what we've just read explain? Can you give examples from other cultures which explain the creation story as well? What are the differences? What are the similarities? So I'd expect a couple of sentences for B and at least a paragraph for the extension. Now, you've got those two to do. Then I would like you to let me find the right slide there we go let's just go through the tasks for today so answer recap and retrieval questions should have done that update your glossary answer questions activities in the reading booklet and then i'd like you to create a character profile for zeus so this is an example so you describe his appearance what is he like? What's his personality like? Does he think he's the best? Does he think he's the best god? And then you can draw a sketch of your character, which is Zeus. I hope you have a great day. Don't forget to send me your amazing work, yr5 at grange.harrow.sch.uk. Um, your lovely, wonderful teachers are being amazing and are still replying to your work. If you do want me specifically to answer any emails, do make sure you write um, to Miss Hewitt um, at the beginning of your email or put it in the subject. And remember to put your names in the emails. Um, sometimes I've been getting emails and I don't know who they're from. So it becomes really hard for me. But I cannot wait to see all your amazing work and I will see you tomorrow, guys. Bye. <laughs>